Welcome to the Voice of the Heroes podcast. If you're tuning in for the first time, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, click that notification bell so you can be notified for upcoming interviews from your favorite heroes and villains across the multiverse. Today, we have a very special guest. You can basically consider him the Batman of anime. Mr. What a <laughs> Drag himself, Tom Gibbons. How are you doing today? Hello, I'm doing good. Life is not a drag. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, there it goes. Welcome to the show. Also, let our people know where they can find you at on social media. Oh, at the real Tom Gibbous on Instagram and TikTok and on threads. So it's all the real Tom Gibbous. So tell us a little bit about the man behind the iconic voice of Shikamaru. Well, what do you want to know? <laughs> um, basically, you know, a little about yourself, how you got started leading up to the role or, you know, some of the trials and tribulations you had to go get through to become, you know, who we know today. <laughs> well, just being an actor is a trial and a tribulation. <laughs> Even so. right, right. Uh, I grew up in Minnesota. Uh, I went to school there. I went to Mankato State, which is now uh, Minnesota State Mankato and got a theater degree, acting, directing. And, um, and then I did a lot of just acting. I, you know, it's funny, a lot of people will get a lot of questions when I go to cons and stuff and they'll say, how do I become a voice actor? Mm. And I'm like, I have no idea how you become a voice actor. I could tell you a lot about how to be an actor. <laughs> and, and that's the way it was. I think if you talk to most of us, we started off as actors and then like this is the one area where we found a little success you know what i'm saying so uh I, so i never really as an actor it was uh opportunity to do car cartoons or animation or anime i was like yes sign me up i'd love to do that but i was also like you want to be in a play yes you want to you want to be in a commercial yep uh, you want to be in a movie yes you know <laughs> those are all things that i had sort of trained for and i've done i've done a lot of improv comedy uh, in Minneapolis, there's a theater called the Brave New Workshop, and that's, uh, that's actually where I met Miley Flanagan, who plays Naruto, and we used to be in an improv group together uh, at the Brave New Workshop in Minneapolis. So, uh, so I've known her since like 1991, <laughs> something like that. Wow, that's and then it just so happened we both auditioned for Naruto. She, of course, got the cast as Naruto. And I, I ended up being Shikamaru. And then it's funny that our two characters who are friends in real life kind of became friends. Best on friends, the show. yes. And now it's Naruto and Shikamaru, the right-hand man, you know, friend to the Hokage, lead advisor. Uh, so it's all very funny. Yeah, that's know? very interesting because nowadays you don't normally meet, you know, your counterparts to, you know, you don't do sessions no more with some right. of the other voice actors. So that's pretty interesting that y'all actually met in real life before transitioning over especially to especially the... with anime yeah because anime it's all when you know by the time we get it it's already been done you know they japan writes the scripts they work you know they put the voice actors in J J japanese in there they send it to us and we get it it's like a complete thing and then what we do is deconstruct it take the japanese voices out and put the american voices in and it has to be like rewritten because things don't translate the way you'd want to. Cause we, we also want it to be like, to have a flow, right? So that it, it sounds the way that people talk. Um, so that anyway, uh, cause there's a lot of people that get upset the way they translate it and stuff, which is way above my pay grade. But <laughs> <laughs> we, when we get it, it's all done. And you're just putting in like Shikamaru's lines. Uh, so you're right in that the book a session and they'll have, I'll be doing like five or six episodes because it's just my lines and they'll do Miley, just her lines, you know, that kind of thing. Um, Cause otherwise you'd have everybody standing around waiting to perform and they, they, they're very efficient. So they try and really just get us in and out. So you might see somebody coming out of a session as you're going into a session, mm -hmm. but half the time, you don't even know if that's a different show. Like, is that's, somebody from Bleach that just recorded and the Naruto person is coming in, you know, cause a lot of these, uh, the studios, they record many, many shows at the same time. Uh, and so, so yeah, you don't, it's not until we started doing uh, conventions and stuff, which is just after the pandemic mm. uh, that we got to kind of hang out and kind of meet each other and get to know each other. Yeah. Uh, and I gotta say the Naruto cast is pretty 
pretty great people, really outstanding people, fun to hang around with, um, super, super nice. And, you know, uh, where some of the cast, I, I mean, I met other voice actors that you just wouldn't want to spend your afternoon with them. <laughs> <laughs> but these guys, the guys on Naruto, I mean, pretty much everybody's is is really great. And, you know, somebody you'd want to hang out with, you know. What are some of okay. the pros and cons of voice acting, especially characters like Shikamaru with such a, you know, passionate fan base from the Naruto community? Um, I guess, well, the... The, the pros are you don't have to go into makeup. You don't have to go into, you're just basically using your voice and you can show up, you know, wearing sweatpants and nobody cares and you can crank them out pretty fast. Uh, the downside is, like I said, you don't get to work with a cast, you know, you're kind of on your own uh, and you're just getting your part of the script. So, you, you know, based, it's really based on how well the director knows the material that we're doing because they're basically giving you a run into it, like saying, okay, so this guy just killed, you know, your sensei and you're upset. Okay, here's your line, go. <laughs> right. and, and, but but they give you a really nice, they usually paint the Mary Elizabeth who we worked for with and for, for many years. Uh, she had a really good grasp of the show. So she could really kind of paint the picture for you, like what was going on and, um, you know, where your character was at that time. And then two, you can see because it's already been animated, like the face of the character, you know, is he kidding? Is he, you know, like if he's got the big eyes and he's like making a smirk, that's usually means, you know, he's kind of joking around a little bit as opposed to, you know, the serious look, you know, the, this guy look, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, then, then, you know, it's a little bit more that you got to give it uh you know, kind of play into that. So, okay, I have a uh, a question about yes, you. You know, just your introduction to anime. So, was it through Naruto that you were introduced no, to anime, or maybe uh, were you first, into it before? The first one I ever did was Digimon. Okay, um, and that there's a director called Jeff Nimoy. Uh, uh, he was sort of a friend of a friend of mine, another actor friend of mine. And I ran him into him at a party and we got to talking and he was directing Digimon. And I said, hey, I think I got a good voice for that kind of thing. I'd love to audition. Uh, what do I got to do? And he's like, have you ever done ADR work before? <laughs> and I said, no. And he goes, I can't use you. And I'm not training anybody in. So, you know, sorry, you know, go somewhere else. And uh, anyway, every time I'd see him, I'd ask him about it. And every time he'd say, no, it's it's complicated. I don't like to work with new people, blah, blah, blah. And then Digimon the movie came around and our friend that we had in common, uh, he and I were talking, he goes, oh yeah, I'm going to go audition for Digimon the movie. And I was like, wait a minute. Because I knew my friend had no ADR experience, had never been behind a mic. And uh, so I called up Jeff and I said, hey, you're bringing in John here. Uh, what What the heck? And he goes, fine, I'll bring you in. <laughs> so uh, I got to read for producers. They liked me. They um, they asked me a bunch of questions and then they said, have you ever done ADR, which is, you know, the it's voice replacement. So you're, you're making it fit with the flaps of the, of the animated character, uh, which is a very tough skill. And especially back when I was starting out um, today, they have things called, uh, there's a program called Pro Tools. And they can slide the voice into it, you know? So if, it's, if you have three flaps to say something, you have to make it fit. In those days, you really had to make it fit. And you you could do 20 takes just trying to get it to fit because they didn't really have a way to move it. Now today, they can speed it up, slow it down, drag it a frame back, a frame forward. But when I learned how to do it, I had to do it the old way. And it was and, more complicated. Uh, ironically, ironically enough they asked me if i'd done date adr and i said no i didn't because i was honest i didn't want to get them mad at me when i showed up for the first day of work so they said you know what we can't cast you in digimon the movie however we like your voice and uh, we think you might have something so we're going to put you in a couple episodes of digimon we're going to try you out we're going to have jeff train you so that was the irony he had to train me <laughs> 
<laughs> and then if that works out, we might have some more work for you. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, they had a show called Shinzo. I did my four episodes or three episodes, whatever it was of Digimon. And then they had um, they had the show called Shinzo, which was like a 30 episode, uh, kind of one and done deal. It was a great little show. It was on Fox Kids for a while, but um, uh, they brought me in for that. And they and I got the lead role in that, and I was very happy about it. And um, it, it was a good time. And I that's where I really learned how to do it. And by the time we got to Naruto, though, uh, it, you know, they'd been the studios have been using Pro Tools and stuff, so it was a lot easier. <laughs> it was a lot easier. And I I think I got Naruto the audition anyway because they were auditioning everybody in town. So basically how it works is the director that I had worked with on that had suggested you should look at Tom and you know it was kind of that kind of a deal and um and so I, I auditioned for that and that audition was they you go into the lobby and they had all the sides of all the characters laid out and I had no idea what Naruto was I'd never heard of it and they said pick three characters and then when you're ready tell us and we'll bring you back and we'll record you and see you know that's your audition so I picked Naruto because the name of the show, right? You want to be the, <laughs> the lead role. Right, right. Let me lead. Uh, and then I picked um, uh, Choji. Interesting. Uh, just because from in the, bar the, the, the description, you know, happy-go-lucky guy, kind of chubby. And I was like, well, that's me for sure. <laughs> and I have a high voice, you know, so I thought it's more friendly. And then for whatever reason, and I don't know why, I picked Shikamaru. And my take on that was like he was like a surfer dude. And, you know, like um, slacker, you know, sit in the back of the class, get gets A's without trying, that guy. And so I did it with a little bit of Bill and Ted's excellent adventure, you know, kind of feel to it, like, whatever, dude, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know like, and, uh, and uh, like two months later, three months later, they called me and they said, hey, we'd like to offer you this part on the show. And I said, what, what part was it? <laughs> Right. <laughs> but that time, you know, in this town, when you audition for something, you got to just forget it like the next day. Otherwise, you'll make yourself crazy going, I wonder if they're going to call. Yeah. The, you know, 90% of the time they don't call. So uh, so anyway, when I got into the thing, they played back my the reference that I did from the, the audition. And and then they gave me some notes like, you know, tone it down. Not so much surfer guy, but a little bit more. They like the quality of my voice, that sort of raspy thing. I came up with that right away uh in the audition they liked that little take on it and um and then we started recording and then i didn't hear from him for like two months after that and it's just because shikamaru's in like episode three and then you don't see him again till like episode 10 or 12 or something so it took him a while to figure that all out and uh and i thought oh they didn't like me they recast me <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't they just be hanging with it and then then it was like i recorded once a month maybe on average for the last 18 years doing the show yeah he oh, he wow. plays a bigger part in the show later on in the war arc i have a great question for you because you talked about you making that voice in audition right then and there the raspy yeah. tone form you also voiced the villain toy man in Justice League's yes. Trapped in Time <laughs> and compared to Shikamaru's voice from Toy Man's voice yeah. it's like two different completely people well, how thank do you, you do that you. where, where we do you get the do. versatility to create these voices uh, it's tough because you know you have you have this instrument and it makes a certain sound I find when I'm auditioning everything sounds like Shikamaru now or or a lot of people just like in conversation right now, we're talking and they're like, oh, I hear Shikamaru in there. Well, yeah, I mean, that is we're 90% of that thing. And you have a range and then you try and figure out like, you can either do a, like a New York accent or something with it, or, <laughs> you know, uh, you can you can affect that way or give a, a lift for, uh, you know, things like that, you know. But I always felt like if you listen to Mel Blanc who does, you know, all the Looney Tunes stuff, right? It was always Mel Blanc. I could tell which characters he did because it's it is his range. But he did, and he would just do things like, you know, Bugs Br Bunny is from the Bronx, you know, and he'd have this, you know, kind of New York accent. And then Foghorn Leghorn 
was a southern gentleman you know? mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's still the same voice you know like uh so that i just thought you know you have the tool that you have and you try and do as many things you can with it um i think what really helps is i have a really strong improv background so when you're on stage and you're doing something you come up with a voice in two seconds and and it may not necessarily be the best choice but it's the best choice at the moment (laughs) but then you also keep going with it and make it work right and so having all that experience of doing that kind of stuff you can look at a script read it once and then go okay i'm going to do this with that and then you, you make a strong choice and then you go forward and basically they're judging you on that strong choice whatever that is and you know i don't know how many jobs i didn't get because i made a strong choice that was completely wrong you know, <laughs> like, uh, especially today, because you basically record from home now when you do your auditions. Uh, it used to be you'd go into the studio and you'd read through it. And you'd, there's the director there. And so they would they would say, oh, no, it's not that. It's this. And then you would try and do that, you know, whatever they, they direct you into doing it. But but really, you're being judged on your choices, um, what you can do with your voice or what thing you can do. And so the anything you can do to make as many distinctions within your own voice uh the better you'll be in this business so make sense (laughs) definitely makes sense gotcha gotcha so i have a question pertaining to uh naruto right yes because as you said you've been doing it for what 18 years now or so 18 yeah 18 or 19 2005 i think oh yeah 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 uh, almost 19 years. Yeah, well, it'll be years. 2024, it'll be 19 years, right? Okay. Yeah. So, Crazy. <laughs> so Crazy, man. Like a... Congratulations for even yeah, holding no, on for to For real, a... for real. Um, just following the series, um, would you say that you're pretty familiar with the Naruto series, um, just being part of it for so long? I definitely know everything Shikamaru knows. Yeah. And beyond that... I've done a little bit of research and I've watched a couple of episodes. I have, I can say I, there's 950 episodes. I've not Mm -hmm. seen them all, but I've seen parts of a lot of them. And uh, I think once it's really kind of funny, like once we started doing uh, conventions just after pandemic, um, somebody reached out to me and said, would you want to go to cons and do signings and 18 years, I did like three of them, you know, or like I should say 16 years, I did like three in that entire time. And then all of a sudden after pandemic, there was a big, I think partly because I think during pandemic, what a lot of people did was they went back and watched 950 episodes. Of Naruto. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And so they, they got their kids into it. They got your, you know, so there's a whole nother generation now. And those kids had grown up, but most mostly it was that people just had all this time on their hands mm-hmm. uh, to do something. There's nothing to do. And it's like, well, let's just start watching Naruto. Uh, and you went, okay. And then people, there was a new interest in it because it was so, uh, it became popular again. And then we're coming up on an anniversary. We're coming up on a, well, there's 20th anniversary of the show being released in Japan. But I think we got into it like three years after it was released in Japan. We brought it over to the United States. And um, so when we're doing the conventions and stuff and kids come up, people come up and ask us questions about the show. I definitely knew my Shikamaru stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't know a lot of the like, you know, people talk about the pain arc or like the because Shikamaru had a very kind of s- slight. Yeah. To that. He like um, broke his leg and he was kind of on yeah, the side right. of that art. Yeah. Which is important, but that's the only part I knew about that stuff. Um, and just what uh, what the other Akatsuki were up to and, and that kind of stuff. So I did a little bit of research and I kind of, mm-hmm. um, because I think I I, I want to talk intelligently about the show. You know, I yeah. don't want it to be, I don't want it to be like, I don't watch it. I don't care. But the fans care. I I care. And I love my character and I, you know, so I have a lot of thoughts about him and I can answer questions about Shikamaro and where he's at and stuff. Um, but I wanted to know the show a lot better. So I, I so I started kind of doing some research and um, I feel like I can comfortably talk about the show in general now, <laughs> but I am by no means an expert, but mm-hmm. I do have some inside knowledge 
just because of doing it. You know, does that make sense? No, that makes uh, a lot of sense. Go ahead. Because there's a lot of actors who have no idea what's going on in this show. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. You know what's funny too is uh, we have the opportunity to talk to Brian Donovan, right? And yeah. uh, he's the voice actor for Rock Lee. And he yeah. was telling us, like, when he would look over at the conventions and see you, he would be jealous, right? Because Rock Lee's such a upbeat and very loud character. And he would said he would be exhausted, you know, doing the voice and stuff. And he says, man, yeah. sometimes I wish I'm Shikamaru because all he has to say is, what did you tag <laughs> And so he would just look at you <laughs> like, oh, man, I wish I was him. Just, <laughs> you know, being able to say my voice lines, which is, like, so easy. But, yeah, it was, yeah. It was pretty funny. We, but, I enjoy um, going to conventions with Brian a lot. He is Mr. Energy. He is Rockley. You know yeah. what I mean? He is Mr. Energy and he is Mr. Positivity. Um, and, uh, he, you know, we just hear him on the other side of the room going, Leave her <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then I'll be doing, yeah, I wish that guy is so annoying. He wish he'd shut up. <laughs> yeah. And then the people at my table will laugh, you know, kind of like, uh yeah shikamaro is great in that way too because you can kind of insult people and they love it mm, you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh i do a lot of like cameos and stuff and people do a birthday thing and then all shikamaro will do is complain about birthdays the entire video <laughs> 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 and, and it's fun because they they laugh at you know it's it yeah, yeah, yeah. You get a whole kind of different level of comedy out of that sort of. He's play. really a lovable character. And, you know, Shikamaru had a lot of arcs in Naruto. I want to ask you because he had a lot of emotional moments. Like, you know, yes. the, the part where Asuma, he watched Asuma dies before he, yeah. his eyes. Spoiler alert. Those who haven't seen the show. Yeah, spoiler. 13 <laughs> years ago. Yeah, 13 years ago. So, but. How do you, you know, what techniques do you use to like bring those emotions to life in these characters? Well, that's, that's where I am thankful for the acting training that I've had in my life. And, you know, I think acting starts out where you've got a little bit of natural talent and then you've got to figure out how to sort of mold that and use that and, and those tricks and things. And there's a million different ways to get there. Um, uh, I, I'm because I'm quick with the improv and stuff. Uh, I can pretty much get there pretty quick. Uh, there's a lot of people that need more to, you know, get into the moment or whatever, uh, that kind of thing. And that's not a knock on them. There's just different styles of acting, uh, just in general. And um, but I'm, I, you know, I knock on wood. I, you know, you do it. You throw it there out into the universe. You, you get explained what the scenario is, you throw yourself into it. And again, with the improv, it allowed me to be like, yeah, I can just dive into that. And you, you put it out there and then you go, does it sound fake? Does mm. it sound inauthentic? Does it sound like I'm just making noises into a microphone? You know, and thank God. I, I mean, the most of the feedback I get is people go, no, no, I... I felt what you were going through. You yeah, know? a lot of people, y'all are so talented. And I want to give you your flowers because a lot of y'all that played in Naruto, like Naruto was my gateway into anime. So right. it was the first time that I considered, because, you know, when I was watching Naruto, I didn't know at the time the difference between anime and a cartoon. I thought it was right. all one in the same. So when I first seen this more adult-themed right. upbeat an cartoon, I felt like, which is an anime, but... The emotions it brought out of me, the tears, the laughs, the excitement, rooting for characters, rooting for villains. You know, there's I, like a whole meme that says, you know, something about, you know, uh, Naruto was the first. I, I never realized I could cry at a cartoon. Like it was mm -hmm. something to that effect. Or it's like, yeah, yeah. I'm, it, or like I'm an adult man watching an anime and getting choked up watching yes. it. You know, well, and to that point, when we perform it, when we're doing our lines and stuff, you, I'm trying to be as authentic as I can possibly be. And I've walked, you know, I've walked into sessions being like, hey, how's everybody doing? Whatever. And walked out going, I don't know why I feel really so upset right now. <laughs> Just being like, you know, and there is part of that of trying to kind of put yourself into it and relive it and feel that feel. And then, you know, there's that part of like, it actually sticks with you, 
you know? So if I feel like it's sticking with me a little bit, like if I walk out of a session and I feel like, I feel upset. I don't know why. I don't, my wife's not upset with me. I didn't say so. And you go, oh yeah, I did a session today and I was <laughs> upset. And, uh, and so then, you know, you just cross your fingers and hope uh, that what you did was true to the character and true to the moment and that it plays well. Cause you know, you're only using your voice. I can't use my face. I can't use my hands. I can't use, you know, to, to, to convey that emotion. And, um, and again, I think you can tell, I, well, that's, I was going to say, you can tell the difference between good animation and bad animation, but it's also sort of pat myself on the back there, <laughs> just mm -hmm. like bad animation. There's so many opportunities, but it doesn't come across authentic. So you never connect with it. You know what I mean? That's usually, if you're watching something that go, this story's good, but the acting is kind of, and you're like, how do you judge the acting? And it's like, because it doesn't seem, it seems like they're reading the lines or it feels like they're not connecting with the material. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're just doing a translation at that point, or you're just doing, I'm a young guy voice and it doesn't really connect with anything. And um, I, I think the fans, uh, at least the, res the the responses I get. I, I mean, if you didn't like me, I guess you wouldn't come to my booth out of con. <laughs> you just be, you just keep walking. So mostly, so my my data that I'm getting is mostly positive because they like the character, they like the way I did it, you know. Um, so with that being said, it seems like I get a lot of positive feedback about, uh, and a lot of people come up and go, you know, you had those scenes, those really heavy scenes, and. Um, man you know that really hit me and yeah. and that's like oh good i did my job you know um because you never know you're, you're in a little booth by yourself you got the director and the engineer and you it's it's all very absurd the way it happens and you throw it out into the universe and you don't know how people are going to respond to it and most of the time you don't get a chance to meet them that's the nice thing about the cons now is you get to meet people and they get to tell you how great you are so it's really a nice <laughs> fun thing to do is you know have people come and you know basically say do you have like a done. really memorable con where it was like overwhelming with the type of responses you got like man i can't believe they they truly love me like yeah i mean kind of the way you say it there it's like you know i'm not i'm not needy about it <laughs> i i think believe it or not there's a lot of people that are annoyed by going to the cons, the actors. Like they just, mm. they're like, okay, it's something to do. I really like chatting with people and talking about this character, this show. Um, I seem to really enjoy it. And there's a few, Brian Donovan's one of them, Michael Yurchek. Um, uh, oh, that's crazy. We're having him on the show next, Michael. Uh, Miley, you know, they. she truly... How good she is to the fans is, I mean, it's crazy. I've seen Miley weep when fans have come up and talked talked to her about their experience or like, you know, life is tough <laughs> and mm. and people go through a lot of stuff and and they tell us like, you know, Naruto got me through eighth grade. You know, I, I felt this and then I saw what you guys were doing in the show and that I, I thought I didn't feel alone, right? And it's a beautiful thing and you can be cynical about it or you can embrace it. And I, that's why I say, I think our cast is such a good cast just because they're all there. I think they just love our fans. Our fans love us. They're, they're so kind and we're not cynical about it. You know what I mean? It's not like a payday or it's not a, it's more like you go to, to share this experience more mm -hmm. than anything. And so, like, I'm a really big fan of Shikamaru. I just want to, like, know, like, as far as, like, you just, you know, studying the character and, like, the ins and out of it, like, how do you feel about Shikamaru and his development from, like, a lazy, laid-back person to the advisor of the Hokage? And recently, I don't know if you know, but where I Shikamaru's do. at I now. I do, but I, that's a big spoiler alert. <laughs> but that's a big spoiler. But, like, how how do you feel about that character development and, like, what can we kind of like take from that as like, you know, how his journey went, like how we can apply it to ourselves, you know? Uh, I think I got so lucky <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that they put a lot of time into the Shikamaru 
um, the, the, you know, his jutsu is shadow possession. And part of that is so he can stop the action and explain what's going on and what's going on inside of his head. Um, yeah. The tuning exams, I thought well, it, it was excellent because he did, there were so many times when you thought he was going to go right and he went left. Or exactly. he was saying, like, I'm not even, I don't even want to do this. Like, remember, if you remember, that fight starts with Naruto pushing him into the arena because yeah. he said, I don't care about, you know, this tuning exam. I don't want to do it. It's a pain in the butt. I, you know, and they put, he gets pushed in against his will. And everybody's you know? booing at him and he's like, we don't even yeah, want to see and you. And then anyway. he's like, <laughs> he's just sitting there going, sometimes I wish I was a cloud there floating goes. along, going wherever the breeze takes me, you know, and it's just, and he's calculating all these moves with Tamari. And then he, you know, there were so many surprises in that fight, right up to the end where he surrenders. And spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> Would you right, consider right. that your favorite fight scene in Naruto? Because Naruto is extremely well known as an anime for its, you know, fight scenes. Do you feel like that's your favorite fight scene in Naruto? Or do you have one that you Well, it's, favor you know, it's hard to compare... Uh, the fight scenes that shikamaru has been involved with have all been good. Um, yes. But then if you look at like Rock Lee versus Gara, when he takes off those ankle weights, mm -hmm. <laughs> like he was wearing ankle weights the whole time. He was, he was it. Okay, yeah. now it's time to get serious. You know, like <laughs> right, right. It's so or like the time when Rock Lee was drunk and he uh, he's trained so well that even passed out he can dodge the staff move <laughs> like freaking right. awesome but i also then got to have the you know that lord jashin or whatever isn't your god anymore oh yes i right. am and the only one that's delivering vengeance today is me and you know it's like holy it's it's like so it's like out of a movie he flips I just the light and, and you know yeah i just got chills like, from Whoa. that yeah, it's uh, it, it's earned, and the, the the thing about Naruto is the writing is so good. It's not just about the fighting; it's the setting up the fighting, and then what the fight means, mm -hmm. and then coming out of that. And you, if you can look at almost every single one of them, it's the resolution of it, right? And and with Shikamaru, I that whole arc with Asuma, uh, and Hidan, it's so earned. It's not like, you know how like they kill people off on Walking Dead just for ratings or it's a shock value. They Man, don't do yeah, that so. in Naruto. Everything is like set up. It's calculated. It has, everything is connected to something else. And um, then to see Shikamaru just walk through that whole thing and come up with a plan and then execute that plan. It's so satisfying, <laughs> you know, the resolution of that, it's mm -hmm. like, you just go, yeah, man. It's and crazy. that's why I call him the Batman of anime, because his preparation with enough prep time, yeah. he could probably defeat any villain in, you know, and that leads into a great question. One of our co-hosts um, had, I'll let Rose ask it, but there's a huge, I don't know if you've seen this trending on Twitter. Um, Rose, go ahead yes, and ask yes. the question. So basically you know there's a lot of memes surrounding naruto and yes. also there's a bunch of discussions as far as like yes. fights we didn't get to see so who's naruto's best was... friend <laughs> yes yes all all of that right so one of the most popular discussions is a character like rock lee who doesn't have access to ninjutsu or genjutsu yeah. what if we gave him a little bit of a power up so the byakugan so rock lee with the byakugan versus someone who also doesn't have you know well basically shikamaru right shikamaru what can we give shikamaru so the 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 popular question is would you rather take rock lee with the byakugan or would you rather take shikamaru with the sharingan who would win in this fight right boy those tools would be nice for shikamaru <laughs> right <laughs> right right that. uh I can kind of answer it this way, and this this maybe kind of goes back to the last question, which I didn't really answer, which is you give Rock Lee Byakugan, but what makes Rock Lee Rock Lee is that he doesn't have it. 
he trains harder. He, he, he doesn't, he doesn't blame anybody. If he fails, he gets, he goes, I should have worked harder. I should have done 10 more pushups. I should have done. And he would not be that person. If you gave him an advantage, like he needs that. He needs to not have the advantage to work harder, be better. The, the reason I love Rock Lee as a character, he's one of my favorite characters is because, so you can, you know, you can watch the show and you can go, well, I don't have a nine tailed beast in me. I can't become this thing, but you can be Rock Lee. Mm, right. You can go train. You can go right now down to the gym and you can, you can uh, learn Taekwondo and you can le learn karate or whatever uh, a discipline that you want to do martial arts. And you can be the guy that shows up early, stays late, does the extra push-ups? is that guy. You can be that guy. So in a way, what Naruto does is they show us all these different types of people and somewhere in there we is us, you know? Right. And, and even in just personality, like, so personality wise, I'd say I'm like a Choji. I'm not real. I'm a, I wish I was as smart as Shikamaru, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Don't we all? I, but I'm a Choji. I'm sort of affable, you know, friendly, happy-go-lucky kind of a guy. You know, I don't sit around and complain about stuff. That's, you know, Shikamaru does that. But we all knew a Shikamaru when we were in school. We all knew a Hinata, the shy girl. You know, we, we know that Rock Lee guy that, you know, like I said, is at the gym at 6 a.m. He, no, he's actually there at 545 because everybody else shows up at 6. <laughs> right, right. And he stays until the gym closes or whatever it is. Uh, and you can apply that to, you know, school worker you know he's the guy in math class that stays after and does extra problems and says to the teacher as you're walking out the door you didn't give us homework for the weekend and you're like oh i want to kill that guy <laughs> right 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 and we all know a sakura we all know a sasuke we all know a naruto it's like th that's the beauty of the show there's all of this that we can relate to and um uh it, it's just a beautiful thing so getting back to the fight question I don't know. Giving them this, the the Byakugan or the Sherigan or the, uh, did I say that right? Uh, <laughs> it takes away from, like, Shikamaru had to uh, train his mind. I mean, he's naturally gifted, but he had to train his mind because his skills are limited. You know, right. Bok Lee had to train his body because he had no chakra to do it. Um, you know, and it's interesting. So, so if you, um, so I don't know, it doesn't make them them. Right. Mm, right exactly. But to a certain extent, I think Shikamaru can figure out a way to hold you, to trap you, to keep you, even if you're the most powerful creature in the world, if Shikamaru has a chance to think about it, I think he's got a way to get out. Mm. That makes sense. And that makes perfect uh, Rock sense. Rock Lee just doesn't quit. There is no quit in that guy. Um, that's the danger of Rock Lee. You know, um, Naruto kind of has a similar problem is that he goes off half, half cocked. So like when we were doing that rescue mission with Sasuke, you know, Chikamaro saying, we're going to do the sliding silver formation. I'll be in the front, Naruto in the back. And then the first time a tree branch cracks, Naruto launches off and just chases him. <laughs> and you're like yeah we had a plan we had a, we talked about the plan <laughs> and he just goes a wall so now <laughs> shikamaro just goes he's gonna go a wall so i have to factor that in you know and i right. love that because he knows he knows what shikamaro uh naruto's gonna do before naruto knows he's gonna do it <laughs> right because yeah. he's studying him and i that's just i just love him that for that alone you know um, yes, but yes, yeah, yes. I wouldn't want to fight Rock Lee. That kid <laughs> keep coming, keep coming. He's going to, you know, you give him more tools. Ugh, Yikes, it's, right? It's more trouble, right? He's, you know, on that, that being said, too, it'd be, I'd love to give him more skills because he's got the purest heart of anyone in Naruto. He's not going to abuse that power, you right. know? So if there's anybody you want to give power to, Rock Lee would be a good candidate. Because he knows what it's like to not have power. Okay. Um, this is just kind of like a, you know, anywhere question. So it could be from Naruto or from any of the other things that you've done. But from a character that you voice acted, is there like a memorable line or a favorite line that you might have? Well, the moneymaker is, what a drag. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny. 
a lot of the other shows, because uh, people will come up and they'll say, hey, I loved you in Shinzo, which is a really deep dive. Uh, and then, like, I even have pictures just in case somebody comes up and I go, what's the quote from that show? What can I put on there? Like, shikamaro has yeah. got 700 quotes, but, you know, it's also been on for 18 years. Uh, so uh, I just, the only thing I remember about the toy man was his laugh, which was like, um, let's see if I can do it. <laughs> which is more like a giggle, right? Uh, but I remember when I hooked into that, I was like, okay, hopefully they're going to give me this part because I think that's going to really work. And it did. And they loved it. So that was fun. Um, but yeah, I memorable lines. I don't know. I, even when we started doing conventions, I had to go through and look up what, you know, just memorable lines of Shikamaru. And I kind of refreshed myself with that. And, um, uh, you know, he's got a ton of them. I don't hide in the shadows. I become them. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. All right. So the last two questions, one of them, with anime becoming so popular now in today's yes. culture, um, is there any ongoing animes or any upcoming animes you would love to be a part of? Uh, I I would love to be. I love it all. You know, like Drake, uh, Demon Slayer came out a couple of years ago, and I was like, ah, why am I not on that show? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it's it's stuff like that. It's like, uh, I mean, I love if I could go back in time, like Cowboy Bebop or you know, the early bleach, you know, stuff mm. was like, oh man. And and they were recording in our same recording. I'm like, I never got an audition for bleach. What the heck? <laughs> 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 and um, so that's, but as far as things coming up, I, you know, I'm not as in tune with the, like what mangas and stuff they're turning into shows. Uh, but yeah, I just, I love to do any of it. It's, it's all fun, you know? Fantastic. So. Now we ask all the voice actors that come on the podcast this question um, just to, you know, get their own opinions and their own thoughts. But give us your top three animes of all time. Yours, not what other people think or what's popular. Your personal favorite top three anime. Well, see, this is because I'm old. <laughs> it's all right, man. You got some people that's, you know, in all our right. community. So my gateway, and I, I'm not a huge anime. I don't, we don't watch a lot of anime in our house. Uh, I mean, for one piece, I watched the Netflix series. Me too. You know, the live action. Guilty. I enjoyed the heck out of it. I've Me never too. watched I'm one guilty. episode of One Piece, but I, I sure love that. And I thought, oh, that's great. You know, like, I, th I hope they don't make a Naruto live action because then, a, you know. Oh, they are. Lionsgate is making I that. know. Uh, uh. <laughs> let's see what happens because that could that could infect me personally <laughs> like if there's another shikamaro out there i don't know it's like i've done his voice for everything that's uh in the in english you know um but hopefully they wouldn't it be nice if they gave us all little cameos and stuff in that if that, that would be stuff. awesome that would actually yeah. be awesome it's really happening uh yeah but i don't look like shikamaro or his dad i can do the voice but you know uh you know it's the way it goes. Um, okay. So favorite anime, 1979, Star Blazers. It was called uh, Space Battleship Yamamoto in mm. Japan. And it's an old battleship, Battleship Yamamoto, that they made into a spaceship. So it looks like a battleship, but it's a spaceship. And there's this threat to Earth. And the uh, I think they called them, the yeah, the Star Blazers. We're going to go and... Uh, save the planet from this invasion thing and it's it's one ship out there in space to protect the whole planet it's just and it you know the the stakes are super high um and they're the only one they're the only ship that can do anything and uh you know they either succeed or fail but you know how it usually ends is that they succeed <laughs> <laughs> but so it's that's uh, number it, one for you was number two uh all right so all right and i don't maybe this qualifies maybe it doesn't uh there's a show called danger mouse have you ever seen danger mm, mouse i don't think i yeah, have and this is like a 1970s they were british spies but they were mice oh <laughs> black and white mice no i think, I think it was in colors i remember but uh danger mouse he had a patch over one eye he's a white mouse and then he had a sidekick, so it was like Sherlock Holmes and Watson. 
but it was also like James Bond. They had, it was with James Bond type of world. And then it was like, Danger Mouse, we're going to go and solve this riddle. You know, they, they had all voices like that. And uh, it's like kind of a comedy, but I think it was, again, somebody have to look it up, but I think it was- I just looked it up. Yeah, I do remember it. I don't remember too. too much about it, but I do remember seeing that. It was really funny. Um, and then my number three, uh, I don't know, maybe Cowboy Bebop. Because mm. I've seen I've seen probably more of that than anything else. And um, uh, it's interesting. You know, all of those are interesting. But, you know, then you got your Dragon Ball Zs and your, you know, One Piece and your Naruto's and your Bleaches. I mean, those are the those are the big heavy hitters, you know, so definitely. Yeah. Once again, Tom. And thank Naruto you. is fantastic, right? So I was excluding Naruto from that list because that's probably the one I know the most about, right? <laughs> no, but that's great because we want to hear your, you know, what's your top three, what's your thoughts and opinions, unbiased answers. Thank you so much, Tom, for coming on the show. This has been one of the best interviews we've had oh, so far, and that's that's saying a lot. Um, thank you so much. Also, if you're watching this on VOD or on YouTube, man, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more interviews from the Voice of the Heroes podcast. I am your host, Fleaboy Jetson. This is my co-host, Hidden Rose. Let them know where they can find you at. You'll find me on YouTube at Hidden Rose. I do a lot of anime gaming content on there. And then Hidden underscore Rose on Twitch. I do anime reactions. See you there. And Which we I just got... Give the one pleasure. Second. Oh, go ahead. Is our the Naruto video game just came out? The Boruto. Yeah, which I, Ultimate which Storm did a lot of work on that, and I guess it's all of the games so far together in one game. It's like the game of the game is the game. Did you happen to work on that? I did. I did. I did all the Shikamaru stuff in there, and we had to go back and do Young Shikamaru, and then Shippuden Shikamaru, and then Old Shikamaru, and. Uh, it was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of oh, fun. That's and I interesting. Think See, that was work. a question I wanted to ask you, but I didn't know if we had enough time because on Twitter, you know, a lot of fans are not supporting the game like they should have, and that's because Bandai has came out. You know, IGN wrote an article about Bandai using AI generated voices for some of the characters oh. in their game, and so that's it's surprising. Because everybody that we interviewed before you said they didn't get a chance to work on the game. So here, wait, wait, wait. Rock Lee didn't do it. I'm pretty sure he, Brian did. I don't think he's he did. He said something about he, you know, he's heard about it. And I know Michael Swalby, the voice actor of Kawaki, he didn't do no lines, and he said he's getting in touch with his um agent. Huh. So that that's kind of interesting. It feels well, like it's weird that some of us did it and others didn't. Because yeah. I know Marcy did it, which is Naruto, and I did it. Because I had to go back. The reason I know is because I had to go back. We spent a lot of time because there's a couple scenes where it's like pre Shikamaro from when the show started, like baby Shikamaro. And we were mm. trying to figure out what that voice was like, like when he was eight instead of, I think the show starts, he's about 12. Well, so, right. So we had to do like, what's his eight year old voice like? You know? Um, yeah, that's interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, but that that's really cool that you was one of the few that got to go back and work on it. I'm pretty sure Yuri did, who's Sasuke. That yeah, maybe they I don't know, maybe they had a certain budget for certain people, and but and or maybe it's because my character is in it from the beginning to all the way through Boruto, because a lot of them weren't in Boruto, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Rock Lee, I, Rock Lee was in Boruto, but he did a couple of lines. And then like Very the Akatsuki and stuff, um, they didn't they weren't in Boruto at all. So maybe they had something to do with that. Now I hmm. think I'm trying to find it real quick. I know Bandai put out a quick like com a statement saying that it wasn't AI generated, that it was, you know, carelessness AI and enhanced. you know, sloppiness during post production or during the um phases of, and they was gonna release a patch. Or upgrade to fix that because you know they're basically saying they didn't use AI that it was just you know during the editing phases that the voices some of the voices from some of the characters you know like their 
I don't um battle cries or you know when they call out certain moves right, right. don't they put in they put in placeholders and you're yeah. saying those were AI and yeah. some of those placeholders didn't get pulled back yeah right? something like that well yeah. you know they they said they was going to patch it up and fix the issue but that's interesting that you brought that that's... up because I definitely wanted to ask you about that but I didn't know if we had enough time who else was some I was just talking to somebody else about this recently. Uh, maybe it was Miley we were talking about it, but um, uh, yeah, uh, and we're talking about gen whatever it's Naruto, Naruto to Barto Ultimate Storm Connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my understanding one. is is the way we did it. Yeah, this is how I know I did record it because I remember this conversation now that we were. It's it's every every Naruto game kind of. And somewhere or another is worked in. That's kind of how you move. It's Boruto sort of living Naruto's life by playing through his all the games. That's kind of the right. overall premise of the, you know, or at least that's the way it was explained to me or what I got out of that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, well, I mean, I don't want to be the authority on it. I might have it wrong, but and I haven't played the game yet. So um, although I did order it, I did order it on. I think my wife got it for me for Christmas, but I'm not supposed to know about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Let people know where they can find you at once again on social media. And if you got any projects or any cons coming up, like let the people know where, where, where they can find you at next. My next con, I'm done for the year. We're off till you know, Christmas and um, uh, New Year's. Tacoma, Washington in January. And then I'm going to Hawaii in February, Aloha Con, which is the last weekend in February. So, um, yeah, if you need an excuse to go to Hawaii, <laughs> As or you want to do an anime convention, you know, that's just the, no better place to do it. So, uh, so those are the two I got coming up. I know I will have other stuff. Oh, no, I might be doing a Texas thing in there somewhere, but I, I, don't, I don't know if that's locked down yet. And um, any upcoming projects you oh, could talk about? Well, I maybe? want to talk about tell you about the video game. And you can find me at the Real Tom Give Us on TikTok and on Instagram. And as far as other things, um, you know, we're, I'm auditioning all the time. I, I'm off of Barato for a while because now we're we've we've caught up. So it'll be like August or September that I'll go back into the booth on that. And other than that, mm. I'm just picking up little things here and there and auditioning and you know. The life of an actor. <laughs> but this is the first break from Boruto. I mean, I've always had a recording session like once a month for 18 years. Ooh. You know, uh, there weren't too many gaps in there. There were, there were a couple where it was like two months or something. But uh, 18 years, I think Chikamaro's like in almost 500 of the episodes that we've done, something like that. Um, I think Miley has the highest count because she's in... Uh, Naruto's in almost every single episode. Um, and uh, anyway, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> but uh, so now I'm off till like September, October, on or August, September. It'll be the fall of next year uh, for Boruto. We're just waiting for it so that the eighth Hokage can emerge. Mm -hmm. and I, hope, hey. I hope they don't screw up his character. <laughs> <laughs> But I like I said, thank you so much once again for coming on the show. It was a pleasure. You're more than welcome back anytime. And thank to so all much. the heroes out there, drop a comment in the comment section below and let us know who you want to see next on the podcast. Until the next time, it's your host, the one and only and only one, Fleet Boy Jetson. What a drag. Oh, man. <laughs> Sing it with me.